From very humble beginnings to the heyday of big studio productions, we've been at the heart of some of ITV's best-loved programmes, celebrating 50 years. This is Central ITV One. Studio One, ATV Centre, Birmingham. Once the centre of a huge entertainment empire that gave ITV some of its best-loved shows. Well, the lights went out here some years ago, but in this programme, just for an hour, we're going to put them back on again as we celebrate half a century of ITV in the Midlands. We'll be checking into that legendary motel, catching a custard pie on Tiswas, confronting TV's like most fearsome reporter, we were losers. dodging the spit on Spitting Image, and lots, lots more. The story of ITV in the Midlands has a modest beginning. A news service broadcast from a converted cinema in Aston using clockwork cameras and the services of a wedding photographer to process the films. The ATV Midlands service began in February of 1956. For the first time, and eight years ahead of the BBC, television showed the people of the Midlands moving pictures of the news on their doorstep. Road to listen valley. Five soldiers and the crew were treated for cuts and bruises. Eight men narrowly escaped with their lives when this RAF helicopter crashed in a blizzard on Shropshire today. ATV Midlands News was on the spot. Our cameraman was in the machine when it crashed. I think a lot of hard work, the most outstanding memory, but it was the sort of job that I enjoyed and I wouldn't have wanted to change it. We did regional news before anybody, before the BBC, and we were certainly the first. In those days, it was so low-tech that two of their three cameras couldn't even record sound, so they had to cheat. We had one sound camera, as I remember, when That's I started, right. and we had to deploy this one camera <laughs> very we carefully. We didn't even, didn't even have that at the beginning. We were gradually built up, didn't we, to one sound camera, two or three mute cameras. Yes. And we found that it all sounded very strange, showing film with no sound at all, no background noise of we any sort. We started music and then decided that was a bad that, thing. That's probably. right. And, and it was always a big argument with the sound department was what sort of music we wanted, whether it was to be serious <laughs> or light or, you know. Yeah. And um, after a long while of those arguments, we decided we'd try and build up a stock of effects, of sound effects, which we could play to go with the mute film. Hello, sound. Oh, it's Mike here with the sound for tonight's news. Uh, we'll need some outside noise first to cover the wild film, which is leading into the sound on film interview at the train crash. Um, and finally, there's 44 and a half seconds of a man who's trying to paddle a homemade helicopter into the air. He's pedaling, but not too frantically, so it won't have to be too quick. Excuse me, madam, will you please keep off the grass? Well, it looks as though I'm getting into trouble around here. What I need is a guide, if I can find one. Can I help you, madam? I am one of the six guides. My name is Mrs King. It oh, seems to me, whenever we look back at old TV clips, a lot of the people seem to speak with terribly refined accents, and rather posh voices. I can answer that for you. Okay, go on. We recruited, in the early days of television, from newspapers and from the drama schools. Now, in those days, the drama schools had to speak properly. So we journalists, we old newspapermen coming into television, thought we've got to polish our act. And I guess that's how it happened. In the lush green fields that surround Poick, a tiny village near Worcester, there is a dustman who lives up a tree. He is Mr. Frank Gunnell, and he has lived very happily up this tree for 28 years. He calls his home Little Dean. Good evening, Mr. Gunnell. Thank you very much for inviting me into your nest, as it Good were. Evening. Tell me, first of all, when did you decide to live in the open air? When I was 14. 
this platform that we're standing on now, which with a stretch of the imagination we could call your terrace, um, it's built on the trunk of, a tre of the tree, yes. is it? How, how old is this tree, by the way? Well, uh, I reckon myself he's about 500 years old. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Gunnell, and I hope you'll spend many, many more very happy years up your tree. Yes, I hope so. Female faces were prominent on the new station as it tried to look as different as possible from the BBC. The lunchtime chat show was presented by one Noel Gordon, later to find fame as a soap star. Continuity was taken care of by Jean Morton. Jean had a lucky break when she was sent two toy koala bears, nicknamed Tinger and Tucker. She took them out and about on increasingly bold adventures. Come along now, you wish with me children, you ready? Please, Magic Boomerang, could we see the bear's uncle Cliff Richard? All together now. Boomerang, Boomerang. Whoopee! Oh! Oh, there you are, Uncle Cliff. Tinger and Tucker developed a huge following and even had their own club. Welcome all the members of the Tinger and Tucker Club. Olé. Another revolutionary aspect of independent television was that it was free to the viewer. Instead of a license fee, programmes were paid for by adverts like these. Butlins, full up for Easter. But you can still enjoy weekend holidays until May at Butlins Minehead, Clacton or Bognor Regis holiday camps. From Friday till Sunday, you'll have a fabulous time. Make new friends, enjoy a full programme of entertainment and dancing every afternoon and evening. A weekend at Butlins makes a delightful change. Try one from now till May at Minehead, Clacton or Bognor Regis. Details from Butlins, Oxford Street, London. This is what s &H pink stamps can mean to you. Why don't you save s &H pink stamps? Shop wherever you see this sign. The power behind ATV was the entertainment mogul Lou Grade. ATV Midlands was a small part of his empire. Most of its energy went into making big name entertainment shows like Sunday Night at the London Palladium. Sunday, sweet Sunday, with nothing to do. Sunday, my one day, alone here with you. The show was largely produced using Midlands technicians, but ATV was coming under increasing pressure to make more of its programmes in Birmingham. It wasn't until 1964 that Lou Grade really put the Midlands on the TV map. Lou was looking for a new soap opera. The result was one of the most famous hotels in history, and we'll be checking in there in just a moment. <laughs> 